this is Kent Kidwell with Renewing the Renaissance and the Beginner School. Uh, we're going to go through and, and watch this video at a five times speed. Uh, the re reason we're doing that is it'll give us a chance to see the details being developed in the piece and that way you can you don't have to wait the six hours through the whole video to watch uh, the piece being developed. So uh, right here we're again going through the geometry of the piece where we've uh, well, we've done the measurements, and I'm just double-checking the, the measurements on that. Remember the width of the nose there, uh, the point of the eyes. Uh, the width of the nose with the nostrils is the same as the width of the eyes. Um, so I'm making those measurements down through the center of the face again so that as I start to develop the details, those things will, uh, will be all aligned and my symmetry will be correct. My, what my tool is doing is actually pulling away material. You can kind of see that it starts to hang off the, the tool. Um, all that's doing is just scratching away small amounts of material. And then it's also leveling the surface because I'm using the flat side of the tool so that I can, I can create a smoother surface and remove any bumps and texture that uh, is on the surface of the piece. I'll go heavier in areas where I want to remove material and I'll I can add a little bit and pull it back away again and you know add the fatty tissue and, and the different spots that create uh, um, character and make the face a little bit more realistic. I can use my finger to smooth out the, the textures on it a little bit as I go. You can just so you can just see how the piece is starting to refine itself out a little bit. You get the little bit deeper deeper lines and creases, and, uh, and I'll bounce around a lot in this. You'll see me going from my from the nose to the mouth and to the eyes. Um, I like to develop a piece as a whole, not so much sticking with one part individually. Um, and focusing on that one part because I believe that all parts of the face kind of tie into each other. As you develop one part, it's better to uh, it's good to keep an eye on the other parts as well and and move along the entire piece if you can at the same time. You also want to make sure that you're taking the time to look underneath the nose uh, to make sure your, your nostrils are uh, shaped properly. And I'll be doing that soon. But basically, you want to make sure you're seeing everything at every angle because at some point when you're, when you're going to cast the piece, you'll see those little flaws like underneath the chin. So don't forget those spots. Um, there we go. And the notch of the lip right above the top lip. Um, just not forgetting those little teeny details that really make it super realistic in the end. I'm going to start working on the eyes soon. I'll start to define the sockets out and also uh, 
define the the shape of the eyeball itself and how it sits into the into the head especially from a profile side if you look at a lot of profiles you see uh, you can see how far the eyeball extends out um, and, and you can look at the angle of how that eyeball sits in the in the in the eye socket and uh, super important especially if you're trying to create a uh, uh, look of intensity or whatever uh, to to know how far to, to to make the eyeball set in the head and uh, and really watching also around the eye when it comes to the cheekbones and the eye socket area and the bones around the eye um, to make sure that they're sym symmetrical on both sides uh, and if the eye is turned to one side or the other, to the left or to the right, uh, it's going to also change um, the symmetry a little bit of the tissue around the eyes, like the eyelids and stuff. So as we get going through this, we'll see if we can't develop the eyes to show that. refining the nostrils out, making sure I uh, use my reference material, if I have some, for creating the nostrils, making sure that the, uh, the rounded portion and the lines around the nostril are correct as well, so that it, uh, it looks accurate. And adding some depth underneath the nose and the crease around the nose, um, shaping out the nostril. Uh, you can see that the uh, the neck area on my piece originally was a little thin, so I'm going to add some muscle structure and thickness, so the little fatty tissue underneath the chin. Uh, again, as you're developing a piece, you'll notice that there's a you get into a rhythm and the and the character starts to develop. Sometimes it's good to just experiment and <clears throat> and find different ways of making the character look more interesting. And that's really the fun of sculpting, is, uh, is creating a character that has <clears throat> character. And uh, as you can see, I wanted to have a little bit more shoulder space, but also I wanted to add a little bit more, a little bit more mus mus uh, muscle texture and also just a little thickness to the neck. Uh, 
as I was developing this piece, I hadn't uh, come up with any kind of theme or anything at this point. Um, but as I as I saw the uh, countenance of the character, and I decided that I was going to make it a Roman senator. So as you uh, you'll see that uh, start to develop later on, but. Um, you can, yeah, the reason I did that is just, it, it, you, you just the character just looked that way. So um, that's, again, part of the, the fun of sculpting is uh, coming up with different characters and doing whatever you feel inspired to do. tool I'm using right now, if you can see it, is a is a loop wire with a scraper surface on it. Basically what that is is just a sharpened kind of flatter surface and it helps me get rid of the bumps and lumps and, uh, and takes away quite a bit of material as well. Since I added material around the neck area, uh, I needed to refine that a little bit. So that's a quick way to get a lot of clay off the piece. And refining the jawline and taking away extra fatty tissue around the cheeks just give them a little more gaunt look but uh, also refines and defines the, the musculature of the jaws So important too as you're developing your piece to, to try and look at it from all angles because although you might have uh, what you want from the front angle, the side of the piece may not be as developed as the front. So watching your uh, profile and really catching the piece from all angles, it, it helps to, uh, to develop the piece on all planes and all sides. And uh, so as somebody's walking around the piece, they'll see um, little details, but also they'll see that the piece is, has got character from all angles, and that's uh, important when you're dealing with sculpture. It's also one of the great parts of sculpture is the fact that you can see it from all angles. And one of the things that I like about sculpting is that I don't have to try and create perspective like you would if you're doing a painting, working on a two-dimensional surface. Um, you know, sculpting is a 3D art, and so you get to see it from all angles and develop the piece from all angles. In some ways it's easier, but in some ways it's also harder because you're, you're having to pay attention to all sides. I 
really enjoyed sculpting eyes because uh, there's so much going on there. You have, uh, you know, to me, it's the focal point of any face, um, and it it's where so much character is developed, and also mood and uh, disposition and everything can be developed through the eyes and the mouth are the two most expressive parts of the face. Um, and when they work together, uh, you really see a uh, character develop and so paying attention to not only the bone structure of the eye but how the eye is um, showing emotion and uh, is also important instead of just doing an eyeball with the lid and with the, the eyebrow you really just have to focus on you know if he was looking at you how what what is it what is his expression trying to to portray what is that look trying to say to you because as we know there's so much uh, there's so much information given to us from just a look uh, you can sometimes uh, tell if somebody's angry, happy, uh, frustrated, whatever, just from a look on their face. So, and then also that uh, how that plays into other parts of the face as well, like the mouth and the and uh, so. If you're new to sculpting and you're watching this video, maybe for the first time seeing a, a sculpture developed, you're probably wondering why there has to be so many passovers for my tool, um, but really is just refining um, and just making and pulling away material and, so, and softening and smoothing the surfaces. And that's so much of what you wind up doing as a sculptor is going over the piece uh, many many times and as you can see I'm starting to develop the uh, the brow line and because I've got that kind of uh, stern look on his face I've decided to 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 carry that also into the eyebrows which again is part of that um, everything works together on a face so uh, matching the mouth and the eyes and the eyebrows and how the face is during any kind of a uh, specific emotion is so important um, and you can see I pulled the eyebrows down a little bit to kind of create uh, either concentration or or a stern look um, I suppose you could interpret this one a couple of different ways but I think it, it is starting to develop itself as more of a uh, a firm uh, a, for, a firm look or, or one of deep concentration and uh, and I liked the way that was uh, that was looking, so I went ahead and developed the piece in that in that way. Also, when you're learning your anatomy, it's super important to uh, to remember that there's there's more than just one aspect of anatomy. It's not just the musculature. It's really, you have to look, starting with the bone structure and then from the bones to the musculature and how the muscles play, how thick they are in the face or in whatever part of the body you're sculpting. But also, as you're developing uh, 
a sculpture, uh, whether it be a figurative work or a portraiture like this, um, that you remember that there's the bone structure, and it moves into the musculature, and the fatty tissue, and then the skin itself. So those four layers, um, you have to be thinking about those as you develop your piece, because the skin, of course, is going to be most affected by age and weight, um, and some of it's going to be texture, but mostly age and weight. And uh, and so, this being a fairly lean character, um, I don't have a lot of saggy skin or anything, but I do have. It does pull closer to the the musculature and also the the, the skeletal structure because he's not got a lot of uh, extra tissue, uh, extra fatty layers or anything like that. So. But it's important as you're doing these kind of studies to try and, and take on as many characters as you can. And some of them having extra weight on the face, super thin, um, you know, maybe saggy flesh, aged flesh. All those are important to practice. And, uh, and it will give you a chance to, to learn you know, how, the, how the face and it universally plays out or even the body when it comes to sculpting that uh, you know some areas the, the the fat just tends to pull up around the cheeks uh, next to the sides of the nose even though this is a lean character he will still have those pockets of tissue and uh, and it plays pretty close on just about everybody so um, getting used to those kind of subtleties uh, will will make your characters more developed. So, you know, this is a definitely an art form that requires a lot of repetition to get good at, and uh, and to have successfully dynamic pieces. I think it's important that you plan to to do many uh, portraitures and and work on certain areas like the hands. Um, it's, it's also a very difficult area for a lot of artists is doing hands because they ever changing in their uh, in their form, draw them out a lot. Um, you know, what I would say the most important thing for sculpture and preparation for sculpture is to do a lot of drawing. It gives you a chance to uh, to learn anatomy and stuff from all different angles as you're drawing them, so that when you start to sculpt, it becomes easier to develop the pieces. starting to develop the or, or refine the shape of the eyeball and also the, uh, the skin around the eyeball with the lid and how those play into that so I'm trying to, cons to, to keep in mind that there are two spheres and that we're only seeing a portion of those spheres so you have to imagine how that ball shape will travel inside of the head how the, the shape will, will round um, if it's too small or if the uh, the diameter of the, of the circumference of the ball 
of your eyeball is too small, it'll it'll make the uh, the character's eye sockets look too big for the ball itself, and it gives you that kind of beady-eyed look. Um, so it's really important that you match the shape of the eyeball to the shape of the of the socket and the and the stru bone structure around it. So, and then uh, you can also, as you get through that part of it. You can start to develop the fatty tissue and the age marks that will also get developed around that. So, I'm doing right now as you can see as I have developed the eyes out a little bit more of being a, a more serious look I'm now going back to the mouth area and I'm drawing out a little bit more line around the uh, the expression on his mouth to match the eyes a little bit closer because I want to bring out that impression of a serious attitude or a, a stern look so Notice I'm bouncing back and forth from one ear to the other. I'm doing that to make sure that my symmetry is correct, that the uh, the top of the ear is in line with the uh, with the eyes and where they sit. And we, although we already covered the geometry of that, it's really important to make sure that you're you're doing things like the eyes, the ears, things that there's two of, and making sure that your symmetry is correct the distance from the eye to the tip of the ear, the distance from the top of the ear to the bottom of the ear, all those different things are important that they match equally on either side. And you can add character to a piece, but you have to do it on both sides with those duplicative parts like the eyes and the ears and the eyebrows. Again, you can see how I'm bouncing from place to place in this. Um, a lot of times you'll see um, sculptors that start this process, they, uh, they tend to focus really hard on one or two areas, and then the, the composition as a whole kind of uh, 
is it slightly degraded because of that because you're not developing the piece all at once a lot of times uh, in Michelangelo's work if you've ever had a chance to look at his sculpting um, you'll see that he develops a, a block of granite or, or excuse me of marble he develops the uh, the piece um, on many angles and tries to to look at the composition um, as a whole block and pull away that material until the piece starts to develop all the way around and then he'll once he gets the, sh the general shape of it then he'll start to refine it down well this uh, the same process is is, uh, is here we're trying to pull the whole piece together as a whole and not just one individual section um, the, the whole composition will look better if we do that Fairly soon we'll be able to, uh, after we get the, the eyes done and the ears done, uh, add small wrinkles and textures to the skin. Uh, this, this particular piece was intended to be more fine art um, and not so much a, uh, like a wax museum type piece. It just was designed to be a fine art representation of a, of a of a head and a lot of times a little bit of texture is okay especially if it's going to be cast in say bronze um, or even uh, other kinds of materials it's not necessary to make the piece you know so refined that you're getting skin texture uh, you know like the small pores and things like that we're just trying to to develop this piece out so that you see a really cool representation of a human head uh, interesting uh, form um, so I'm not going to take it down to that 2% I'm going to try and to leave the you know the uh, the essence of sculpture were there so you can see that there's lines and things in there it's not so necessary that I bring it down to that level Gone ahead and grab a, a really a fine tipped tool, scraping tool that I have there. It has a flat surface and a like a flattish blade on it, and it's really good for making little details and uh, creating smaller, thinner lines and creases. And also, to smoothing out planes like the eyes, um, as I scratch those away, I want them to be nicely rounded. Even on both sides, but you can also see how it. I'm able to get it get underneath the eye, uh, brow, and create a sharper line there. Using that tool. As a sculptor, you start to recognize, especially when you're spending a lot of hours sculpting, you start to uh, become very attached to specific tools. Um, so as you start to sculpt, you know, have a lit, have a good, uh, group of tools that you use, and then you'll notice you'll start to, uh, wander back to the same tools, the ones that you really, really are getting the kind of look you want from. So you can see I skipped to more of a scoop there to pull away material, but it also has a sharp angle on the tip, 
uh, but I've had um, some tools uh, like the one I was previously using for 20 years plus <laughs> and uh, it almost feels like an extension of my hand you know I've been using it for so long and if I lost it I would be in a real panic so it's just something you kind of uh, real close to <clears throat> added a little bit of clay there you can see because I want to develop the uh, the eyelid and also that uh, little bit of material that hangs down or a little bit of tissue that hangs down over the top of the eyes as you get older um, that adds a lot of character to the eyes As you can see, I'm back to that one tool again. Again, it's really good at drawing out lines and creases. <clears throat> and refining. I'm adding a little bit of fatty tissue underneath the eyes. Trying to place this character somewhere in the <laughs> late 30s, early 40s, maybe, um, which means that he'll have a little bit more of those kind of age marks and uh, a little bit more defined bags under the eyes as you get older. That becomes more refined. The lines on the forehead, the creases, smiles, and facial expression <clears throat> get more dug in and. Uh, and they, they stick around, whereas if you're younger, of course, your skin is more pliable and flexible. You, those, those lines don't usually stay until you start getting older. Again, still, still always continuing going back and refining the uh, the socket area, using the natural form of the of the muscle and the bone structure to determine the shape of the of the bags under the eyes and the lines and the creases. Yeah, keep in mind everything works together. Refining the nose out a little bit. Referring back to our ear lesson, um, you'll start to develop that nine shape. <laughs> um, and uh, pulling away the material necessary to create that look. Um,
Once I have the year roughed out, I'm going to go ahead and go to the other side and match what I've done. As you can see my geometry line there um, that goes down the center or excuse me as you're looking at the side profile of the head you'll see that line drawn downward and that the uh, the tip of the curl of the ear uh, starts at that point um, again these are general measurements and they're, they're not exact for everybody some people um, Everybody's head is slightly different from one another, but I, but generally speaking, they they land in somewhere in that region. So, those um, reference points and geometry lines that we've that we're showing there are really just based on on averages, and so you have the power to adjust those slightly. Um, depending on the person you're trying to sculpt or your own personal feeling. As long as you stay close to those po points, though, you'll have a uh, much more believable um, piece when you're finished. Also, if you'll remember that the uh, the ears, if you follow the eyebrow line back, and then the bottom of the nose, that's the space you're going to be developing your ears at. So right now I'm going to get into doing the hair, and I, I was able to pull up uh, a little bit of reference material on how Romans did their hair, and at this point I'm pretty much sure that's the direction I was going to go, so... Uh, this is clay sketching. Uh, really, you can see it much faster in this kind of a setting at five times speed. But it's almost like you're just drawing and you're, you're sketching in hair. Um, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. It's just getting the, the bulk of the hair, the thickness of the hair, the material in there. And then I can start to direct the hair and how it flows on the head. Um, Of uh, sculptors like to just do almost what I'm doing right now as being uh, the finished kind of, of hair where they just bulk it in roughly um, and to kind of give the uh, I, I almost look at it like in, it's interpretive it's a uh, it's like an impressionist uh, using a paintbrush loosely and throwing a lot of paint on and creating the blurred look of where these uh where the hair would be or whatever so it, it's it's a uh, you can see some sculptors use that kind of impressionistic style when they're sculpting where it's not necessarily super refined but you get an idea of what they're trying to show you if you blur your eyes it looks or, or step back it does look like uh hair whereas i'm going to refine this out a little bit I'm adding a robe, kind of a toga.
Now I'm taking my uh, my tool and I'm pulling the hair in the direction that I want it to go. Again, I'm not creating every every individual hair. I'm more working in small clumps of hair. When you're adding hair as well, you want to make sure you're paying attention to how the, uh, you know, how the hair parts, uh, the the natural parting of the hair, where the hair follicles uh, direct the hair. Uh, you can see that um, how do you that the direction of his hair coming from off of his scalp. You can see that how he's pulled it forward and. Uh, So you can see how I'm trying to pull that hair forward from the back of his head a little bit um, to create that hairstyle that uh, you see often represented in Roman art. on the neck. Um, again, these are going to get softened. We're going to use a, uh, a paint thinner or uh, any kind of a solvent typically will work. Paint thinner, um, NAMFA, um, acetone maybe. Um, just test it using a soft brush as you uh, as you finish up your details and you, you, you like where it's looking and like where it's going. You can go in and, and add a little bit of that, uh, those mineral spirits to, to smooth the clay. And we'll do that in a minute after I've developed the hair out a little bit more.
you can see we're starting to come to the end of this piece. Um, I'm just going to look at it again from all angles, try and see areas of weakness, uh, make sure that I'm not uh, missing something, but in general I'm pretty happy with how it's all coming out at this point. Um, it does kind of remind me of a senator guy. So now I'm going to go ahead and refine it out using uh, mineral spirits. Um, and the more that you brush this material on, the uh, or brush the mineral spirits on, the more you're more material pulling away from it. It's a very thin layer, but it is enough to to actually take away details and stuff like that. So you want to be careful. Uh, make sure you use a nice soft brush and uh, and that you're not over, you're not spilling the material on there. You're just using just enough to kind of coat the surface and then soften those little lines and stuff. You can see the details, little scratches in the in the neck and stuff start to get become a little bit more refined as well and, and look more like real wrinkles rather than just scratch marks and surface of the clay. So some areas will require more um, brushing than others. Going back and adding little details and I'll come back with the brush again, little lines and things. Okay, there we have it. Roman Senator. <laughs> uh, hope you enjoyed our uh, study of the human head, and we really enjoyed having you watch this, and, and we hope we can use it in your studies and and help you in your, in your path to getting better as, as being a sculptor. Thanks again for joining us with the Beginner School and Renewing the Renaissance, and hope you'll come back again and again. Thank you.